In this PowerPoint, we're going to cover how to chart medications in EHR Tutor, specifically oral medications, which may be ordered PRN, or medications which have parameters for administration. When you are in the course in EHR Tutor, click on the activity that you are supposed to be doing and open the patient's chart. It will open to the patient summary, which you see here on this slide. And in the menu to the left of the summary, you will find the tabs to click through to navigate through all the different sections of the chart. About midway down, click on the medication administration record or the MAR. Another thing you can do from that opening menu on the left-hand side is click on the orders. It's good to compare the orders with the MAR. You can toggle between the two to check the medications you'll give with the orders that you'll written. And by doing this, you will avoid medication errors. When you open the MAR, you will see the date at the top. In this instance, it is the 2nd of May, 2021. You can scroll through different dates by clicking on the calendar to the right of the date that you see. Below the date, you'll see times for administration. You can scroll backwards and forwards through the times in eight hour time periods. Next, you will see a list of medications ordered. The scheduled medications are listed first and the times that they are scheduled are highlighted in the boxes to the right with the word scheduled. The PRN medications are listed at the bottom with no time for administration listed because they are given as needed. To chart the medication administration, you can either click on the word scheduled or click on the rectangle next to the corresponding medication and under the time slot in which you, give, in which you wish to give the medication. When you click on the MAR, a pop-up box appears where you can document the details of your medication administration. Please note that there are two pieces of information underneath the name of the medication. Here, the name of the medication is aspirin. The first bit of information you see is the actual order, the dose, frequency, scheduled time, if appropriate, it may be a PRN, so there may not be a scheduled time, and the route the medication is to be given. In this case, it's by mouth. Under that, it will give you the start date and the stop date, if appropriate. Sometimes meds are ordered just for a specific period of time, so they will have a stop date. It will also give you how the medication is dispensed. That may be very different from what is ordered. This is a very important detail. Here the order states you are to give 162 milligrams, but the medication is dispensed as 81 milligram tablets. If you do the math, that means you will give two 81 milligram tablets for the 162 milligram dose. This is very important because sometimes students will mix up what is dispensed with what is ordered and that can result in a medication error. So if you look up in the top, the first box, you can select from several different choices in the first dropdown. Uh, one of them is given, one is started, refused, and held. These terms are pretty self-explanatory. If you select anything other than given, which means you gave the medication, um, you will need to document the reason for your choice in the comments section. We will talk about this later related to parameters, but another example of perhaps a reason someone would refuse a medication, the comment could be refused due to complaints of nausea. Notice that the next box, date and time, are pre-populated. If you wish to chart another date and time, you can change it. For instance, if you wanted to chart at 9.15 rather than 9 o'clock. Remember that when administering medications, you do have a grace period before and after the scheduled time so that most often charting the scheduled time is okay if you are within that grace period. An example of when it would be necessary to chart the exact time would be when you are giving a time sensitive medication such as sublingual nitroglycerin or perhaps a critical care drug such as a vasopressor. 
So below the date and time, the next boxes are for the dose. As you can see, you enter the number in the free text box and then you choose units from the drop down. Now in this instance, you have two choices. You could chart 162 milligrams because the, that is the ordered dose or you could chart two tabs because it's supplied in 81 milligram tabs and two tabs is equivalent to the ordered dose. Most of the time that choice is not applicable, but I wanted to illustrate it here. Then there is another box for the rate, which is not pertinent for oral meds. So we're going to skip that now. If there's a comment, include that in the free text box and then hit the blue update chart. This will record your information and take you back to the main page of the MAR. Once you are back on the main page of the MAR, there you will see that your administration is noted with your initials in the box next to the medication and under the time which you gave it. In this instance, it is next to aspirin and under 9 a.m. If you hover over your initials, as in the bottom example, you will see details for the administration. For example, the dose, time, and any comments. In this case, there were no comments written, so it says none. If you are giving a drug for which there are parameters in the order, you will need to complete those assessments prior to giving the medication. In this case, lisinopril is an antihypertensive and you would take the blood pressure as the order states to hold the medication for a systolic BP under 90 milligrams of mercury. In this example, the blood pressure was 110 over 60, so it is safe to give the drug. You can see that given is selected from the first drop down. The date and time is populated at May 2nd, 2021 at 9 a.m. The dose, 20 milligrams, was entered below the date and time. The rate is NA for an oral med, so we're not going to bother with that. And the blood pressure is recorded in the comments section. In this example, you are scheduled to give metoprolol, which is another antihypertensive. In this case, the drug is a beta blocker and that affects the heart rate as well as the blood pressure. So the parameters include both vital signs, the heart rate and the blood pressure. You are to hold for a heart rate less than 60 or a systolic blood pressure less than 90. You would give or hold the medication based on both parameters. So if one of the parameters is out of the normal range, you would hold the medication. As you can see here, in this example, the blood pressure was okay, but the heart rate is below 60, so the medication was held, and the vital signs to explain the situation are written in the comments box. Another way you can chart this is to note it on the vital signs graphic, and there's an example of that at the bottom of this slide. Now this information must be recorded on the MAR, but charting it on the vital signs graphic is a nice thing to do because it gives someone who's tracking the vital signs an idea of what happened with the meds as a result of the dip in the heart rate. I charted a heart rate of 58, and then if you scroll down to the bottom of the vital signs graphic, there's a comment box where I entered that I held the metoprolol. Vital signs are not the only parameter that is written for a medication. Often lab values will determine whether or not you give the medication or how much of the medication you give. In this example, you will notice that potassium chloride is to be held for a serum potassium that is greater than five milliequivalents per liter. This patient's potassium is 5.1, so the medication is held and the lab value is listed in the comments section as the reason for holding the medication. After submitting the entry, the MAR reflects that the medicine was held rather than given. Please note that in some cases, you may need to notify the provider of this lab value. Always check the orders in case it indicates this. It may not say specifically to let the provider know, but in this case, a potassium of 5.1 is pretty high and high levels of potassium can affect other medications 
or that the patient might be taking, or it might be an indication of decreased renal function. So a phone call might be warranted. Always refer to your facil facility policy on notification for critical lab values. A lab value may also determine the dosage you will give. This is called titrating a medication. In this example, look at the order. A specific dose of warfarin is not indicated. You have to look down at the admin administration instructions to see that the dose is determined according to the INR value. In this case, the INR value in the top example is three, so the warfarin was held. You can see that anything greater than three, or excuse me, 2.5, you hold the dose. In the bottom example, the INR is 0 0.9. So the dose ordered is 7.5 milligrams. You can see in the administration instructions that anything less than one, you give 7.5 milligrams. The INR is noted in the comments section of both examples as the reason that the specific dosage was either held or administered. PRN medications can be given for a lot of reasons, but often they are given for pain. In this example, the dose given is determined by the patient's pain level. A higher dose is ordered for a more intense level of pain. The patient said their pain was 6 out of 10, so 5 milligrams would give, were given, since in the order it says for pain levels between 4 and 7, give 5 milligrams. The pain level is noted in the comment section to explain the rationale for the dose administered. Sometimes, as in this example, an analgesic is just ordered as a specific dose for pain, and there is no dose adjustment for the level of pain the patient's experiencing. Uh, tramadol is ordered here in a 50 milligram dose just for pain. You can also document that you gave what you gave for pain in the vital signs graphic. So as we discussed earlier, it must be documented in the MAR. As you can see, you gave the medication, you, there's the dose, and then the comment says you gave it for back pain, level five. It's nice for the person reviewing the chart to know that a pain level of five was, of five was treated, so you can also document it in the vital sign graphic. That way, they don't have to flip back to the MAR to check. So you'll see here, this is from the vital sign graphic at the bottom, the numeric pain rating is five, and in the comment box, I've listed that tramadol 50 milligrams was given for back pain. You could also note the time you gave the med here, which would be a good thing for the person to know uh, who's reviewing the chart so that they'll know approximately what time that was given and where they are in terms of assessing pain for that particular patient. <laughs> 